You are watching Ubuntu Boot Camp Part 5. In this episode, I am going to install Ubuntu alongside Windows. And that learning begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's begin. Now, if you've been following this series, you have already had a chance to experiment and play with Ubuntu in live CD mode. Now, the reason this isn't filling the whole screen is because of the fact that I'm actually running this in a virtual environment. But this will fill the full screen once we've installed the video drivers and that sort of thing. Okay, first, uh, since we've already tested, I'm not even going to bother hitting the Try Ubuntu button. We've already had a look at it. Now, let's go ahead and hit Install Ubuntu. Now, at this screen, you want to make sure that everything is checked here, that you have at least 4.4 gigs of space available, that you are plugged into a power source, that you are connected to the Internet. You will also want to check Download Updates while installing. Also, if you want to play media files, you will need to install third-party software. This includes an MP3 plugin, which will allow you to play your music and that sort of thing. Plus, it will also download some other video codecs. But it will not give you what you need for uh, playing DVDs just yet. But we will cover that in a later episode. So we're going to check that one as well. Then we're going to press Continue. Now, we are given a few options here. This computer has Windows XP Professional installed on it. In this exercise, we're going to install Ubuntu alongside Microsoft Windows XP Professional. Although, if you have tested Ubuntu and you decide that you really love it and you're really sick of Windows and you don't want to use it, you can actually replace Microsoft uh, Windows XP Professional. Also, if you have four partitions on your computer, you decide you don't want to back them up, you really just want to run Ubuntu or uh, Linux in general by itself, this option will be the only option available to you if you have all four of those primary partitions um, used up to actually install uh, Ubuntu as main system. So let's go ahead and select and install Ubuntu alongside and then press continue. Now we have a little slider here. On the left side this is Windows and on the right side this is the proposed size we want for Ubuntu. Now, something to keep in mind, you will remember that it said that it's requesting that you have at least uh, at least 4.4 gigs of space available. So if you wanted to, you could move that slider down. But the only thing is, I recommend giving a little bit more space to Ubuntu because obviously you're going to want to install a lot of the great programs that this operating system runs. So actually, I'm just going to give it about half and half, roughly, you know, a 4.3 to Windows and then 4.3 to Ubuntu. And then we'll press install now. This is giving you a warning, telling you before you can select a new partition size, any previous changes have to be written to disk. You cannot undo this operation, and this may take a long time. We're going to go ahead and press continue. All right, the next step, it's going to ask us where we are. Also, I want to note the uh, resizing of the partitions went really fast because of the fact that I took the time to uh, defragment the hard drive. So. Uh, I was surprised how quickly that went. As a matter of fact, I really didn't even need to pause this video. So uh, that's always a plus. Next, it's going to ask us to check our keyboard layout. And this automatically detected that I'm running an English United States keyboard. And uh, it's also selected on the right. You can also type in um, a sentence just to double check. All 
All right, I'm very happy with that. So let's go ahead and press continue. Pick a username. All right, choose a computer name. I think that's satisfactory. And then we'll pick a password. All right, and then you have a choice here. You can choose to log in automatically, or you could require your password to log in. In this case, I'm going to choose to log in automatically, since this is in a virtual environment, but you may want to have it require your password every time you log in. That choice is yours. And now we are presented with a slideshow explaining all of the wonderful things that Ubuntu Linux is going to do for you. And you can quickly page through this if you wish get up and make a sandwich the installation doesn't take that long but it tells you all about the Ubuntu Software Center here a lot of the programs that you can get for this it tells you about how you can manage your photo photos and it also tells you some software that you can actually get from the software center such as the GIMP or you can get the PTV video editor which is great for you novices out there if you want to manage your photo collections and you want to uh, make uh, simple little videos to share with your family and friends it's a great program to use but Shotwell comes preloaded with this you also have Ubuntu One. You can set up a free account with uh, 5 gigs of cloud storage. You might want to take advantage of that. Arguably, a lot of people will say, get a Dropbox account. I recommend doing that as well. You can never have too much space online to store your data in the cloud should a problem occur. At least your data is safe. And then, of course, you have uh, the Rhythm Box the, blah, blah, I can't even get that out today. You get the Rhythm Box music player and the Ubuntu One music store where you can download and uh, purchase your music selections. And of course, Rhythm Box will manage all those files for you. And then, of course, you uh, have a connectivity with Twitter, Facebook, and Identi. Dot .ca uh what that is i have no idea but the thing is you can access all of that from a nice little menu on the bar up here once you have all of that set up then of course you get the firefox web browser pre-installed but later we will install flash you can also use chromium chromium supports flash out of the box so that may a good be a good choice for some of you out there personally i like firefox the best and then, of course, you get the LibreOffice Suite pre-installed on this with the writer, Calc Impress. And uh, for those of you who uh, have to bring your work home, this is a great software that you can use to open those Office documents. And then, of course, options for customizing and making this your own is all here with Appearance Assistive Technologies and with Language Support. And then, of course, if you have any questions or if you need support for this, the Ubuntu forums is a great place to look. If you run into an issue, odds are there are a number of other people out there who have experienced that same problem, and they are ready and willing to give you the answers you're looking for. A lot of those answers are already up there on the forums, so you'll definitely want to check them out. Okay, once installation is finished, let's go ahead and press Restart Now. Okay, now that we have rebooted the computer, now we are looking at GNU Grub, which is the Grand Unified Bootloader. And here you have some options for booting the system. You can run Ubuntu with Linux. You have a recovery mode, a memory test, and then, of course, Microsoft XP Professional. Something I want to point out, this is using a generic PAE kernel. This is great for those of you who really didn't know whether your system supported 32 or 64-bit. So if you have more than 4 gigs of RAM installed on your system, you can run this 32-bit operating system, and it will use up all of your memory, including if you have a more than 4 gigs of RAM. So that is a nice touch. But guess what, folks? We are not going to boot into Ubuntu just yet. I want to boot into Windows. I want to make sure Windows is still working, so let's go ahead and select that. Now, as you can see, we have a, a message stating that it needs to check my disk for consistency. It says you can cancel this check, disk check, but is strongly recommended that you continue. This 
is normal. Do not be alarmed. Anytime you change a disk size, uh, Windows is going to complain about it. And it's going to, you know, double check and make sure everything's okay and that sort of thing. And now it's going to restart the computer once more. Then, of course, we're back in the Grand Unified Bootloader or Grub. And we're going to go ahead and select to start Windows XP again. I want to make sure that everything is going to be working properly, so let's go ahead and let this boot up and uh, see what we get here. Excellent. It's hiding my notification icons, and everything is hunky-dory. All right. Well, let's just check a program or two. Okay, it looks like it wants to reboot again. Oh, golly gee. Ugh. Gotta love Windows. Reboot, 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 wash, rinse, and repeat. Real quick here, I just want to see if uh, inter if uh, Mozilla Firefox is going to work for us. Yes, and of course it's working. We're connected to the internet. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm happy. Uh, at least I know Windows is working and it's uh, being its usual self. Yeah, do you want to reboot? Okay, yes, we do want to reboot, but I can see Windows is working. So... Let's go ahead and boot into Ubuntu this time. And you'll remember, of course, that I selected that I will have it log in automatically. Now, in the event that you selected that you want it to boot up with uh, requiring your username and password, you will have to uh, select your name and then type in your password. Excellent. Ubuntu is now installed. And now we can start doing a few things with this. Say, that was pretty easy installing that, huh? Well, now, in my next episode, this is going to be a Linux Zoo Crew episode, so please check out the show notes below, Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, UTC, negative 5. We will be discussing things that you might want to do after installing Ubuntu. You'll definitely want to join us for that one. Mm -hmm.